Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So, Tarek in a continuing series, is that an analog in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? Where I show you the analog pocket and get you guys set up with the cores, the controllers, the games, everything like that. And today, starting off with the core guys, we're doing Neo Geo AES and MVS because it is one of my favorite consoles of all time and I have a large collection for it. So I definitely want to see if the port of Vertex Core to the analog pocket stands up and get you guys playing today. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, I got a Patreon link down below as well. But honestly, playing Neo Geo on the analog pocket has been an outstanding experience, and that is because the code is ported from Vertex implementation, which we have on Mister. So obviously, all of the work on here, it's going to be an outstanding core. I've got no complaints of how it works. Unfortunately, you cannot plug an AES or MVS cartridge into the analog pocket. Don't know if that adapter is coming out anytime soon, but honestly, that's more just a visual joke. But it's so much fun to play Neo Geo either handheld or docked. It is such a fun console and one that I know not everyone grew up with. It's one of those things, if you're an arcade fan or even if you've never come to it, getting this entire console and its library in your analog pocket is outstanding, so I want to make sure you guys know how to get it set up. Now a note on this, I am testing it with the Neo Geo CD pad from 8BitDo with the correct USB dongle, I'll leave a link to that below. You definitely want a clicky stick if you can help it, but honestly a D-pad from a Series X will work. Unfortunately, I tested all the arcade sticks I have on the Pockets dock. I did a controller video last week that I'll link below, and I could not get any of them to function. So right now it's Neo Geo CD pad for me. But obviously, you want to get started, so let's get into this and figure out how to get the core set up. Now on your micro SD card, if you go into assets and down to the NG folder, it's going to be Neo Geo, but it just has the prefix of NG. Now once you get into this folder, you should see three subfolders, Common, Mazamars, and Mazamars Overdrive. If you do not have these folders, you haven't set your SD card up yet, and go to the setup guide that I did two weeks ago. But if you go into here, you're going to see all the JSON files for all of the different games, and under Common, you're going to see these three files. You need these three files for the core to function on the analog pocket. If for any reason you do not have them there, go back to my startup guide and run pocket updater. Just hit zero, that'll update all of the cores, add everything in, and it will bring the three files down that you need to use to play Neo Geo AES and MVS games on your analog pocket. Just be aware if you're not familiar with the pocket or Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD is not included in this. It's not working on the pocket. Maybe soon, maybe never, who knows. Now you need to add the games to your Neo Geo Pocket SD card. You'll see here they're all folderized. There's only one set of games that works. That's the Darksoft Roll-Up Pack. You're on your own finding that. You should own the games before you put them on your pocket. Do with that as you will. But you will see here we have every single Neo Geo AES and MVS game, including different variants and ROM hacks. So we will take all of these folders, we will copy them, and we will paste them into the common folder. Don't put them in the core folders. They have to be in common and they have to be in their own folders. This is about seven and change gigabytes of data, so it's definitely gonna take a little bit of time for these files to copy over. So start it, go grab yourself a nice coffee, have a beer, take a walk outside, come back in like 10 minutes or so, you'll have all of those games copied over to the common folder. Just remember, common folder, nothing else. But it's basically as simple as that. We've got the three files we need. We have our entire game set. We are good to go. And if you go into a folder, you'll see that it's just different ROM chips from the cartridges pivoted over to be just files. It's as simple as that. And like I said, if you're missing those three files, just run Pocket Updater and you will be fine. Getting the games onto your SD card is half the battle. Once you do that, just go ahead, eject it, and pop that micro SD card back into your analog pocket. Maybe the hardest thing to do in the world if you don't have some nails. But when you come into your analog pocket, whether you're docked or handheld, you're going to go into Open FPGA. And even though the Neo Geo is considered an arcade system, it's going to be under consoles, probably for the AES. You'll see there's the number two next to it, and that's because there's two different cores we can use. By default, it's going to just be the default Neo Geo FPGA core and underneath that will be overdrive which allows you to overclock the cpu to alleviate slowdown on some games like metal slug 2 i will show you how that works later on in the video though if it's not defaulted to the standard core default it now that way you know that you're going on to the same version that i am 
From there, you just go up and hit run, and you can pick any single game from the list of games you just brought over. I will say the loading can be a little bit slow, though, compared to Mr. FPGA, the time it takes to load that ROM into memory. I am going to cut this right here, but to load up Matter Melee, it took a minute and six seconds from start to finish until I was in-game, so just be aware that slowness is just inherent to the overall setup. But once you do that, you're in-game, and Matter Melee is one of my favorite games of all time. But we still have a lot to talk about though, so don't go anywhere just because the games are running. We have to go over the menu settings, the Unibios settings, and different cheat modes we can enable because we do have the Unibios installed by default, which is one of the best benefits compared to a stock Neo Geo AES, having that special BIOS that was developed just for Neo Geo fans to do different things with the hardware. But as far as my first impressions of the core are concerned on analog pockets, exactly as I would expect a Neo Geo to be. And again, that's because this is just ported code from Furtech, and he made an absolutely outstanding Neo Geo FPGA core back when we had it on Mr. FPGA and it plays as good as real hardware of which I have a lot. Now, if you do want to change the controls you can reconfigure them in the core options under controls. You can remap one of them, all of them, reset them to default. You can set up the control pad however you wish because the Neo Geo was a four button setup. We have other options as well. If you see down here you can reset the core if you just want to reload your game but we have screen position X and Y as well. When you reset the core, if you hold down A, B, and C, you're going to get to the Unibios menu. From there, you can pick the region that you want, Japan, USA, or Euro, as well as whether you want it to be an arcade system, MVS, or a console, AES. That's going to change how certain things work, music and attract modes, etc, etc. It'll also, in some games, dictate the language you get for the story, but you'll see here I set it up as Japan for Matter Melee, and there's a very specific reason. Not every single game on the Neo Geo does this, but some games have different elements different stories and different soundtracks depending on the region you're in. If you were playing Matra Melee on the US or Euro version of the firmware, you're going to get a very boring soundtrack. If you move it over to the Japanese version, you get the Japanese exclusive soundtrack, which is a 10 out of 10 soundtrack and so much better than stock. And go ahead and listen to the sound sample for 45 seconds, hear the quality of the core, and I'll be back and show you some more settings. <laughs> That sounds exactly as I expect Matra Melee to sound, and trust me, I played this game hundreds of times. Now, if you think it sounds a little bit muffled, that has nothing to do with the core or the pocket. That's because these soundtracks have been compressed to fit onto a Neo Geo screen. Now, if you go back into the options, you're going to have a couple different video options here as far as the aspect ratio is concerned. You're going to have 04H aspect, and then you're going to have these different aspect ratios right here. 19 by 15, 160 by what I can't see, 4 by 3, and widescreen. Definitely don't use the widescreen. That's it's not really a preferred way to play these games. They are so good looking. Do not stretch them, but if you do, I'm not really going to judge you. And then, like I said earlier, if you want to move the screen X and Y position around, you totally can. Totally easy. But let's take a look at Metal Slug 2 on the standard core. Now, pay attention here if you're not familiar with the game. This is not a core issue whatsoever. The slowdown you're seeing on screen is a mathematical error that the developers made that causes the CPU cycles to get basically out of whack, for lack of a better term, to not get too technical, which causes severe slow down in certain areas. It's one of those things they try to improve it with Metal Slug X, but it's just part and parcel of playing the original Metal Slug 2 on real hardware or on an accurate FPGA core. That slowdown right there is brutal. Now if we go back into consoles and under Neo Geo and we go to change core, we have the overdrive core which allows us to overclock the CPU which should improve some of the slowdown. Now this is not a magic bullet. It's not going to fix absolutely everything, but it will improve it on some games that experience that. So if you come back in into Metal Slug 2 as well again and we go into the core settings we can go down to CPU and enable 16 megahertz speed that is not the stock clock core for the Neo Geo and when we come back into the game, you're going to see that it still does like to slow down here and there, but it's going to be much more improved. This is a nice option if you want to play some games that have some slowdown. Now the Turbo Core, sometimes it affects games that run at full speed, sometimes it does nothing to them whatsoever. It is game to game dependent on what it does. It's definitely used most for Metal Slug 2 here just to fix some of that slowdown. You'll see it still exists, but it definitely didn't lag near as much. And the gameplay experience is just a much smoother situation all around. 
around. So do be aware that that overdrive core does exist, but if you're just playing games and you want to get off that, go back into your core options under Neo Geo and default right back to the non-overdrive core. But this game is just spectacular. It's so much fun. But let's talk about loading new games. I've heard a few people asking why you have to quit out to the main menu every time you want to change, and you don't. Just go to Load Game under Core Options. It's going to bring up all of the games you have in the folders right here. Don't quit the core and go back to the main menu where you have to open up Open FPGA. Just switch it with the Load Game option. Now, if you've never played a Neo Geo before, you're not sure what the Unibios is, it is basically just an options menu you can run in-game. If you press Start and select at the same time the unibios menu is going to come up and we have a cheat database you can enable red blood sometimes bouncy my is a very popular option with some people playing us roms don't forget that you have that option there. Hit start and select at the same time. The Unibios in-game menu will come up and you can do whatever you want from there, including resetting the Neo Geo itself to get back to the Unibios menu if you hold down A, B, and C. But again, just playing this, there's so many amazing games on the Neo Geo Core. I tested a bunch. I'm not going to put every single one in the video, but I saw absolutely nothing that would lead me to believe that this is nothing more than a perfect core. Because obviously, as I've said twice now, this is ported from Vertex Core, and the porter did an excellent job of doing that and bringing it over to Pocket. And this is as good as real hardware any day of the week. And honestly, if you get into collecting Neo Geo games, pro tip, don't. It is a hell of a lot cheaper than buying cartridges some of them are more than a mortgage payment some of them cost more than your average vehicle new truth be told but moving over to something like pulse star here an absolutely incredible shooter on the neo geo but if you take a death it becomes almost impossible to continue moving on but we still have that unibios menu so we can go ahead and just hit start and select in a second after we took that death right there and restore ourselves back to a better state come back into the game, start and select at the same time, and go into the cheat database. We can add maximum shot charge, maximum shots, anything like that. I don't usually ever play with invincibility, but it's up to you what you want to use. Select what you want, hit C to exit, and now you'll see our ship is 100% perfectly powered up. It is a fun thing, especially when you're practicing a game. But honestly, the Neo Geo is most well known for fighters, and it's got an absolute metric ton of them, metric melee being my favorite, but don't discount Waku Waku 7 here. If you've never played it and you see it in the menu, give it a go. Maracoon here has the most cake of any fighting game character known to man. All jokes aside, the Neo Geo library is stacked. It has some of the best games in arcades from back in the 90s that you will ever play. And if you follow this setup guide, you will 100% be playing them on your analog pocket shortly. And if you run into any issues, leave me a comment down below. I can't promise I always have the time to help you guys, but I do what I can. But if you do everything that I said, you're going to be playing Neo Geo on your analog pocket, on the go, on a train, on a plane. When you come home and dock it into the dock, you're playing an FPGA accurate Neo Geo Core from your couch, and it is outstanding. Short of that, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what sort of guides you want to see next. I've got a whole list, but I kind of do this in the order in which you guys ask for it, outside of Neo Geo being my favorite. Short of that, I'll have videos throughout the week. Stay tuned, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.